Hey everybody, this is Hugh LaBelle, the creator and lead developer of the Music and Sound Design platform, and today I want to go over all of the changes that have come out with the 1.3.0 update. This is going to be a pretty large video, so let's get started. Now the first thing that I want to go over are the modifications that have been made to the save and reload functionality within the program. Uh, so I just launched Music SDP, and right away we can see that we have a new button on the left-hand side of the project loader. This is the Resume Last Session button, and this will allow us to come back to uh, our last saved state. So I'm going to go ahead and click that now, which will bring us into a program that I went ahead and put together, and I've called it the uh, 1.3.0 Update Project. And in this project, you can see that I have... Um, I've changed the background on my system board and I've gone ahead and created a couple of uh, boards, uh, pedal boards to play with. Now before I go into that very quickly I want to go over the modifications to the project settings menu and I want to go over the new uh, system preferences window. So uh, with the new save state ability a lot of what we had in the project settings isn't as necessary as it was before so this has been uh, streamlined and thinned out a little bit. Uh, most of what you'll need to work with is now on the main project settings tab such as the toggle between full screen and um, windowed mode. Uh, the ability to change our background color um, and of course what's still really important is the ability to turn on and off different full view devices on our system board. So I'll go ahead and uh, in the master mixer I will switch back turn that on and that's good to go. Um, and you can see that already there are a couple of states that are sa saved. This is from a previous um, uh, session in this project and uh, some of the things you may notice is that the power is off, that's because I've saved that there as well. I'll come back to that in a moment. Now let's look at the new System Preferences window. So if we go to File, Preferences, uh, we can see a window that's not dissimilar to the Project Settings window, but it has some different uh, tools for us to work with. So we do have um, new project settings over here, and this is going to determine how our new projects start off, whether we want the audio engine on, the limiter on, uh, which system boards we want to be on by default whenever we create a new project, things like that. Now over to the left, we have some new things. We have the ability to toggle between different user feedback settings, and up here at the top we have the ability to choose in more detail our audio settings. So we have the ability to set our driver, our input, and our output, just like we have on the system board, but below that we have sample rate, IO vector, and signal vector, which will um, greatly change the uh, signal and audio quality that we're working with. Um, the rate will be determined by your hardware. Uh, as you can see with my current setup, I can go all the way up to 192K, but I'm going to leave it at 44.1K for this video. So, fun new things to mess around with. Now, I have gone ahead and built a board for us to look at very quickly. I'll let that load, and I'll see one thing that needs to change is the power is off, so let me turn that on. Um, and I can play some notes. Sort of sounds like what we expect it to sound like. Uh, I have an arpeggiator controlling that, and it's going through um, an echo effect. Those two sounds, the synthesizer and the echoed synthesizer, are being uh, combined together in a signal hub and then sent to a reverb effect to kind of blend it all together. It's a nice sound. And if I turn the arpeggiator on, we can listen to that for a quick moment. Okay, that's very pretty, right? Um, now you may have noticed that unlike previous updates, uh, when I opened up this module, not only did it open up, but it actually went to a specific portion of the screen. Another new feature that we've got is that we can now uh, keep track of where the pedal boards are when they save. Um, that's a pretty neat feature. Uh, something else that might be neat would be say, uh, well, let's make a new pedal board and let's see what happens if we save a project with a new pedal board open. So I'll load uh, another synthesizer, maybe just the basic additive, and I'll throw a preset into that. Um, how about the soaring arpeggios? That's a fun one. View the arpeggiator. Great. Maybe play some notes. Okay. Okay, that's fun. Um, now, let's look at how to save and how to reload. We can actually save from a variety of places. On any pedal board, we can see the Save Project button on the as the rightmost option now. So I can hit that, and that will save the project. Or, as you would in any other program, you can go to File, Save, and you can even use your favorite shortcuts like uh, Command-S or Control-S, depending on which operating system you're working in. 
Um, now, because we have saved this project, the next time I come into it, this pedal board will be open. Uh, we haven't saved this pedal board, it's not on the list, but we did save it with the project. So if I um, close out of Music STP, open it back up, do do do, and reload either from Resume Last Session or by selecting the project from the menu, go ahead and be old school. There it is again, right where we left it. Right now, here's something important. Because this board was not saved before, it now has this sort of default name thrown in. That's a little bit nasty, so why don't we give it something better? Uh, I'll hit Save Board As, and I'll call it Arpeggios uh, 2, since the other one also has Arpeggios. Now, of course, that's been renamed, and that's been added to our list of boards. Great, uh, just like we hoped it would. I want to point out some other things that have saved with this project, though. Uh, look at the recording tools, and we'll see that the name that I chose for our recordings has been saved. Um, and if I open up the... Well, actually, there's another thing to notice. The system board, which was open before, is closed, because when I saved the project, the system board was closed. Uh, so let's open that up again and come back to where we were. And let's look at some other things we can do with this new save functionality. So this patch is very similar to Synth1 um, with one important difference. It is having the signal routed um, instead of to a reverb, it is having the signal routed. The synthesizer without the echo is routed into master one. And it says master one, and that's gonna go into the first strip of the master mixer, and the echo is routed to master two, the second strip. If I start the arpeggiator here, Okay, so we can see that the non-echoed sound is coming out of strip one, and the echoed sound is coming in strip two. Now I'm gonna save this as it is. I'm gonna save it with these sliders down just so it's not interrupting my ability to talk. And um, if we hit save, and if I now go back to the project window, we'll get one more check. Do you want to save? If you go to project window, it will check you for that. Um, then the next time we reload the patch. Not only do we have synth 2 open, which is what we had open before, the master mixer at its last settings have been saved. Notice the system board now is wide open. One thing to note is that the arpeggiator is not on, and that is intentional. We don't want to necessarily start up a project with everything running already. It's a good way to uh, create some unintended consequences.